Good evening, everyone. We have a lot to get to on a very newsy Friday, including a major development in the January 6th front. A federal grand jury today indicted former Trump advisor Peter Navarro, who ignored a subpoena from the January 6th committee. Navarro hasn't been shy about divulging his role in the plot to overturn the election. He wrote a book and talked to pretty much everyone with a microphone, including my colleague Ari Melber last night. He is now the second Trump ally on contempt, indicted on contempt of Congress charges. And we will have a lot more on that coming up. But we begin the readout tonight with a choice. A choice about the continuation of mass murders and school shootings that are plaguing this country. Because it is a choice, not an inevitability, as some might want you to believe. In fact, one of our political parties has gone to great lengths to make you think just that. Well, at this point, shouldn't the Republican Party just keep it real and openly admit, at long last, that they believe that a substantial number of dead churchgoers and dead shoppers and dead doctors, and yes, dead children, big kids and little ones, is an acceptable trade-off for them to have as many guns as they want, whenever they want, with as little inconvenience as possible. And no one has said it better than Democratic Congressman Mondaire Jones, who spoke during yesterday's contentious House Judiciary Committee debate over the Democrats' package of gun safety bills. As the youngest member of this committee, I need to address my Republican colleagues on behalf of the generations of young people whom Republicans have condemned to grow up in fear that they will be gunned down at school. Since Columbine, more than 311,000 children have experienced gun violence at school. There were more school shootings last year than in any year since 1999, the year of Columbine. And there have been more than 200 mass shootings this year already. The leading cause of death of American children is now gun violence. Behind every one of those statistics is the story of a person, often a child, who mattered. To the parents who mourn and the children who fear, all you have to offer are more guns and apparently the ridiculous idea of fewer school doors. My generation and the generations who have followed know that this epidemic of gun violence is not unstoppable. It is a choice, a choice you could make differently at any time, a choice between our lives and your guns. Time after time, we have given you a chance to do something. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Parkland, and time after time, you have chosen to put your right to kill over our right to live. But your selfishness and your indifference have not killed our hope. You have transformed it. Before, we believe that you might do what the people overwhelmingly support and help advance common sense gun violence legislation. Now we know that it is up to us to save ourselves from you. We did not choose this fight. We had our own dreams for our lives, the same as you did when you were kids, but we can't let you get away with this anymore. Enough is enough. Enough of you telling us that school shootings are a fact of life when every other country like ours has virtually ended it. Enough of you blaming mental illness and then defunding mental health care in this country. Enough of your thoughts and prayers. Enough. Enough. Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York joins me now, along with Jim Gard, a math teacher in Coconut Creek, Florida, and a survivor of the 2018 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in Parkland, Florida. Thank you both for being here. Um, I really, really appreciate both of you. And uh, Representative Jones, you know, that headline, 311,000 young people, students exposed to gun violence since Columbine is a damning statistic for this country. Um, but I want to play you what uh, Louis Gohmert, we saw that really empty set of seats on the other side as you were speaking. Republicans didn't seem to have the courage to listen to you in person. But Louis Gohmert did respond. Here's what he said. To infer by rhetorical supposed questions, who are you here for? We must be here for the gunman is an outrage. How dare you? You think we don't have hearts? And to be clear, he was actually not responding to you. He was actually responding to Eric Swalwell. So just to clear up that. But how do you respond to those Republicans who get all misty and say, we don't, don't you think we have hearts too? Well, well, the answer is that no, we don't think 
that you have hearts because you could do that which is required to stop the massacring of American children. And time after time, you refuse to honor your oath and you refuse to do the basic things that are required. I mean, th these, are, these are not aggressive actions that we are contemplating in Congress. We're talking about universal background checks, uh, raising the age to purchase semi-automatic weapons in the way that you have to be 21 years old to do any number of other things in our society that are far less deadly than owning a firearm. Uh, and of course, we do need to ban assault weapons, which we're still whipping votes to do. Uh, but this is something that is a uniquely an American problem. Uh, and I just reject the idea that any of my Republican colleagues have any good faith basis whatsoever to continue their obstruction and their opposition to something that is broadly supported by the American people. Yeah, including by the vast majority of gun owners who also say, yeah, this is common sense stuff. You shouldn't be able to just go over to a gun show and evade filling out the paperwork and just pick up an AR-15 and go out and do what you got to do. Um, Jim Gard, thank you for being here. The, when Republicans try to put forward solution, it's things like only have one door to go in and out. So no egress. So, so basically one door. God forbid there's any ever a stampede situation or that the gunman comes in that one door. I'm not sure what their plan is there. You have Lindsey Graham, the, the senator from South Carolina, saying that he wants to recruit thousands and thousands of military veterans and have them guard schools, basically turning our schools into military compounds. That's his solution rather than deal with the fact that in the case of the, the shooting that you survived, a 19-year-old was able to get an AR-15. Your thoughts on that? There's no logic to his uh, solution. Um, you know, we're, we're still four years later, and the kids, my own son, uh, who uh, went through that as a middle schooler, were still affected by it. Uh, even with the latest shooting, you know, having a hard time sleeping, even through that for the past week. Uh, this, more guns is not a solution. Let me ask you about that. I, to thank you for correcting me that your son went through. When, you, when your son, when your family sees these shootings after shooting, it's got to be re-traumatizing. Because I think you add to that 311,000 students who've experienced gun violence, the, the, the millions of students who are continuing to be traumatized by it. Because even if you survive it, then every other mass shooting of kids your age traumatizes you again. Oh yes, I mean these kids are in generation lockdown. I mean this is all that they that they go through, and it's they're they're just they're just so used to it. Um, and that's one thing you talk about kids who who were murdered, uh, kids who were injured, and it's the entire the entire uh, all their friends, all their all their relatives or coaches, what have you, and it's something that will live with you forever and ever. And you're your teacher. Um... What about this idea that you that you should get a gun? You know that you should you you were a teacher at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Should, should would that have been a solution for you and other teachers to have a, a, a you know a pistol to be able to to, to fight a person with an AR-15? Well, it wasn't a solution last week uh, in Texas when you actually had professionals Fair. who had guns. And here I am, a teacher of what my this, I'm just finishing year 41. Uh, my expertise is not firearms; it's mathematics. There you go. Um, Representative Jones, there is this other meme from Republicans that laws don't do anything. Um, you know, Gomer would go on to say, well, in states that have really strict gun laws, lots of people die in big cities there, leaving out the side that those guns are often trafficked into those state cities and states, places like New York from places like Virginia, where it's easier to get guns. He left that part out. But if laws don't work, why don't they work everywhere else? I just want to put up this chart. Australia, they passed a gun law in 1996. Their shooting rate, um, their, their deaths per 100,000 people by, via gun are a fraction of ours, 0.19 versus ours, which is 3.96. New Zealand, similar. They passed a gun law in 2019. It seems to have worked. They had a, two major mass shootings. They haven't had hardly any since. Norway passed a law in 2018. Seemed to work there. Ditto, the United Kingdom. How do you explain that? Because they're claiming that gun laws don't work, but they seem to have worked everywhere else, but, but here, everywhere else. Well, they, they can't explain it. Uh, it is without a basis, in fact. Uh, you can identify any number of mass shootings over the past several decades and draw a direct link between uh, someone's not having to go through a background check that would have been a red flag for them, 
or their ability to easily access an assault weapon that would have been banned under legislation that we are considering passing through the House. Uh, and, and that will give this, the evidence that you need to conclude that strong laws aimed at ending gun violence would actually be effective at accomplishing precisely what the goal is that House Democrats are talking about here. You know, I, I was 11 years old when Columbine happened. And as horrified as I was in that moment, I never imagined that school shootings would become the norm in this country to the point where so many folks are now numb to them. And we've got students doing these exercises alongside their teachers uh, when they should be studying mathematics. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm just so appalled by the behavior of my colleagues here. And the entire world needs to see who is responsible because House Democrats and Senate Democrats are standing up to do the right thing here. Uh, and, and we know that the right thing is what both Democrats, Republicans, and, by the way, independent voters support, because the polling bears that out. It is the yeah. NRA with its hold over the Republican Party, and it's folks like Tucker Carlson, who went on his show last night and, of course, attacked me, uh, as, he, as he loves to do, uh, for just stating the facts that we need to abolish the filibuster because we will not find 10 Republicans of good conscience to do anything meaningful in this moment because they have failed repeatedly to do that in so many other instances. Uh, and, and I'm gonna keep speaking truth.